friends, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we are zoomed in. I am wearing no makeup. I thought since my internet is out and I can't watch YouTube videos while I'm getting ready, that I would do a get ready with me and just show you guys some of the new products that I've been sort of loving for my everyday, just general makeup. They're not necessarily like new to the makeup world, more so they're just new discoveries in my collection. So go ahead and grab your makeup and let's get ready together. All right, so I'm gonna start with priming first. I'm gonna be using my Avon eyeshadow primer, which I mentioned in my favorites, I'm a big fan of. I put just a little bit on and then I put some onto each eyelid. So Labor Day weekend here, which I'm sure you guys are gonna be seeing well after Labor Day weekend and getting ready for school. School year starting, year five of teaching, year three at um, the school in Massachusetts I've been teaching at, and um, feeling good, feeling a little nervous at the same time, because uh, we're doing some new things for the school, new schedule. I'm teaching a new course, but um, I'm kind of excited. For my face primer, I'm using the Too Faced Primed Poreless Pure. I got this at like an Ulta 21 days um, forever ago, just a little bit. This is like one of my first times using it, but I'm at that point now where I finished up the Becca one that I raved about in my favorites video, and I have too many other primers for me to finish before I can purchase that one. So just putting it all over my face. This is, um, silicone based so if you don't like that you're probably not gonna like this primer all right now that my face is got primer on it and my eyelids I'm gonna go ahead I always do my eye makeup first just because I find that uh, I always have some kind of fallout for eyeshadow so I hate doing my face makeup and then my eye makeup and having fallout happen so it's just the way I play it um, my base right now is the LOC Tati collaboration um, shadow stick in on point this is my favorite it's really universal i can use it under pretty much any kind of eye look that i want to do the only real like con of this shadow stick is uh, i have to sharpen it so frequently and it definitely is something that i'm going to use up really fast so i don't think i would buy this again because it's about the same price as a color tattoo but you get color tattoos forever. So it's just not the best value for your money because you use it so much, but uh, I do like it as just a nice base to make other eyeshadows pop. All right, then um, I do, I work from the top down, which I know is kind of not what you normally see in these kind of video tutorials, but for me with hooded eyes, I find that it is a lot easier to start from the top and move down. That way I can um, kind of layer products better with my hooded eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Lorac Pro Palette and use the cream. As you can see, I have hit pan on it. This, if I finish this up before the year is out, I will have pan completely uh, for cream shadows, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, to lay this on, I'm gonna use the Morphe M330. It looks like this. This came in one of my Morphe uh, brush descriptions that I did for like four months. Really, truly, if you guys don't have a lot of brushes or you want to explore more brushes, this is absolutely the service to do that in because I found that most of my brushes you'll see later on are Morphe now and it's because of the subscription service. Um, I'm just laying this literally everywhere except the moving part of my lid and I do lay it on pretty heavily. Um, I don't know why I like cream so much because it's basically my skin tone, but I find that by doing this, it helps the other shadows that I put down blend really easily, uh, which I'm a fan of. But anyways, back to what I was saying about the start of the school year. I'm curious for you guys, if you are not a teacher, which I'm sure many of you aren't, what is it like for you this time of year? Like I'm used, like, I do back to school shopping for supplies. I go back to school clothes shopping. Like, do you guys do that stuff? Do you engage in those like back to school sales or are you kind of like, it's just another day in my life? I'm really curious about that because I, I don't work what I call a regular job. 
Now that I've got the cream on, I'm going into my Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells little trio. As you guys probably know, I am working on panning the crease shade in this. So, spoiler alert, I'm going to show you guys where I'm at with it. So, I'm just kind of slowly making my way with this. The thing with this is that it's super pigmented and I'm super pale. So, it doesn't take a whole lot to lay onto my eyes, as you can see. Sorry I'm looking up all the time. The way this camera works, this is kind of new for me is I have a like flip up screen. So I'm used to looking at myself after filming my laptop for like three years. So I constantly am looking up to see if I'm in the right camera range angle, whatever it's called terms. Uh, for this, I'm gonna use my MUA crease brush. This thing is life. I literally hunted down a second one because I was afraid that it wouldn't still exist in the future. And this is literally my holy grail. It's perfect for laying a lot of product in, building product up um, for my hooded eyes. Like, I freaking love this brush. And then I just start with windshield wiper motions. I like to put a little bit more on the outer part of my eye and then with the other product that I've packed in, I'll just blend it over. But I just really like that with this color, I can build it up to the texture of where I want it or the texture, the amount of like pigmentation that I want. And it's, in my opinion, not easy to go overboard with it, which is nice because I tend to struggle with uh, building product up. I get a little too excited. Okay, so now that I have this down, yes, it looks a little crazy. I'm going in with the other color that I am trying to pan. I recently repressed this. This is the Rimmel London Glam Eyes 140 Precious Rose. I don't have a lot left in here. Like I said, I repressed it because it was getting to be a pain in the butt to uh, constantly be digging around for product. And I'm gonna be using a like fluffy flat brush. This is from Royal in Langnickel. I had it in a favorites video a while back. This is just an awesome brush for putting shadow onto my eye. Uh, this is not the most pigmented color ever, so I really have to load up the brush, but now that I've used it so much, I know just the right amount, and I put it all over the moving part of my lid. Now, you're seeing that, and you're like, wow, it's pretty nice. One, I've put a lot of shadow on, and two, it's all because of the base. If I didn't have a base on, I feel like this wouldn't even be visible, truly. All right, then what I'm doing is I'm gonna go back to that Morphe brush that I put the cream down on. I'm just gonna go ahead and sort of blend this stuff together, just using some gentle strokes. I clearly am using such stark colors, but I like to be able to just make them melt together more. All right, and that takes care of the eyes. So now I'm gonna move on to eyeliners. I always will water my waterline first with the NYX Wonder Pencil, which just helps make my eyes look brighter, a bit more alert and awake and less lost with all of this stuff going on, especially because I use black, which can be really harsh for uh, my particular complexion. I just prefer it though over brown. So I'll go ahead and line it. All right, and then I'm gonna go with what may very well become my new Holy Grail uh, liquid eyeliner. This is the, I think it's Clio is how you pronounce it. It's the Kill Black uh, Waterproof Pen Liner. This is such a precise little felt tip liner. I can get literally the thinnest line I want or the thickest line and it's super easy to achieve. Uh, this thing is not cheap though. I want to say it's in like the $20 price range. This is a Korean brand, but you'll notice um, I have a couple of Korean makeup products that I really, really like in today's Get Ready With Me. So I personally have to pull my uh, eyelid completely tight. Got a little thick on me because I was talking, which I don't frequently do when I'm lining my eyes, but I just find that this is super precise. Um, <clears throat> like it's such a dark color, I like one swipe, a couple of touch-ups, big fan of it. 
Uh, and then I'm gonna do the other one. Bada bing, bada boom. Like it's super simple. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, and the reason why I pull my eyes tight is because I have what I think is like some excess skin. I have tried to do it. Like I see in tutorials where girls would literally just like take it and line this way. I can't do that. My skin will move and I can't get like a nice straight line. So I always just pull my eyes tight. I get the line that I want. And I also don't line all the way um, down to the end of my eyelid, which would be right about here, because I feel like it pulls my eyes down and makes them just not look as good, which is probably a terrible way to describe that, but it's just the truth. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, so that's just why I do that. It's, I don't see anyone else doing it on YouTube, but it just is what works best for me and what I got going on with my skin. All right, now we're gonna do the very fun eyelash curling. This, I don't even know what brand of eyelash curler this is. This, I got in an Ipsy bag, and it probably is one of the best Ipsy things I've ever received because I honest to God have used it every single day since I got it in that bag. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do my lashes. And then we're gonna do some mascara. Now, I got this in a like Birchbox sample kit. It's the brand, I think it's called Wally. I don't know if that's correct. Deep, uh, it says four millimeters long. This is again a uh, Korean brand and I first pulled this out and I went to use it and I was like mm, okay I don't typically love these types of I don't typically love these types of you know like basic wands I do prefer mostly plastic wands but I'm gonna tell you guys I really really like this um I use the shorter end here to do like an initial layer and then I'll flip it over and use the longer bristles and I really like the impact of it. I'm gonna go ahead and put some on with my compact here. So like with the short, you can see that it doesn't look that great. It's kind of lumpy, but now when I flip it over and do the longer side it separates the lashes and it provides even more volume which big fan of ah let me zoom you guys in so you can see like that's a lot of lash i'm a fan of it i like it uh and i'm someone who's not a, like i don't really wear false eyelashes so i really like the look of this but at the same time i don't have what i consider to be finicky lashes my lashes are pretty decent to begin with, so this just enhances it. Again, I have no idea how expensive this is. It came in a discovery kit that I picked up. Uh, I feel like Korean beauty is becoming more and more mainstream, but I feel like it's definitely more expensive here than it would be in actual Korea. I feel like this is probably a drugstore brand there, but here we're gonna easily pay 15 to 20 bucks for it, which I don't know if I like it for that price, but I'm pretty happy to have it in this kit. All right, so now that my eyes are done, we're gonna move on to my face. Um, I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can see a little bit here. I've got some um, recovering acne healing spots here. This is typically where I'm gonna get most of my acne. If anything, it will always be, I always have it along here. Uh, I also have a little bit of a mark here and then I've got a few on my nose, which is definitely unique. I don't tend to have a lot typically on my nose area, but that's what I'm working with. So as always, I'm going to go ahead and use my physician formula. This is like a concealer twins, I think it's called. I've had this thing for years. I, instead of repurchasing this every time I run out of it, I just purchased like a squeeze tube of this and this. And I constantly refill this. Probably not the most sanitary thing to do, but it works for me and I've not had a lot of problems. So I'm just gonna blot a little bit on the acne marks and in case you don't know green is to combat redness so initial layer I just blend out with my finger and that's it looks a little freaky right now I'm gonna zoom you back out all right so you can see the rest of my face so as you can see I have a lot of freckles and for me Freckles is something that I don't necessarily want to hide those. I 
don't mind having freckles and it's also they're all over my body so I feel like if you couldn't see freckles on my face that would look a little abnormal so one thing that I use is the Maybelline Dream Wonder. I had pulled this out because I'm at the point now in my collection where all of my favorites or like holy grails or things that I've been project panning in the past are gone and now I'm left with just like some things that I either haven't played with before or just hadn't really wanted to use yet and I don't want to repurchase the new things that I love until I've gone through some of those. So this is one of those things where I actually do like this um, and I don't know where other things so I'm pulling this out. I'm going to put some onto my hand. I actually have to use a lot of this stuff. I feel like a lot of it gets sucked up into my beauty blender. Um, and if I haven't mentioned this yet, I am in the shade Porcelain Ivory, which I feel like is their lightest color. But I take a beauty blender, I put some on, and then I just will pack this onto my face. And I just want to zoom in so you guys can see what it looks like on my skin. So you can see like half of my face has it and you can still see my freckles through here. Like you can still see my um, under eye circles, which I didn't do anything to cover these up just because right now in the summer, I don't do a whole lot of that. I find that just a brightening concealer is sufficient for me versus like the other half of my face, you can really see my freckles pierced through here. You can see some of my like unevenness of my skin. So I really like this because it just sits well on my face and it dries down to like a powdery finish. So I don't even notice it. It's sort of like second skin, but it's definitely not a high coverage. If you're looking for something that's going to eliminate everything, this ain't it. I personally love the Beauty Blender. It is my favorite. I know you guys um, are looking for me to do a two, like a first impressions or a review on the like face brushes that I use, that I bought that like look like hair brushes but are actually makeup brushes. And I will eventually get there. I tested it out on my own and I just don't like the buffing technique. I, I don't know. I just, to me it doesn't seem as natural. Maybe I'm just not as good at putting it on as I would be if I did it all the time. So I'm gonna do a video showing you what it looks like with a beauty blender versus doing the brush so that you can kind of decide for yourself if you'd want them. I've seen them more and more at TJ Maxx and Marshalls and um, I don't think they're a bad price for what you get. All right, so now I'm all even and I'm gonna move on to my um, concealer. I have been, this is like a side piece. It's not been in a Project 10 pan, but I took the stopper out and I have been like slowly working my way through this. I just put a little bit on the under part of my eyes. And we're gonna take my new Beauty Blender favorite. This is not Beauty Blender. This is actually from Ulta. Um, I have heard really mixed reviews about the Beauty Blender version of these. And I don't know, I wanted to just try them and I didn't want to make the Beauty Blender purchase. Uh, so I got these ones from Ulta. I'm a big fan of these. I actually really like using this versus the Beauty Blender because it just gives me a little bit more precision. I can get really close to my under eye area and work the product in. Like, boom, I'm done. I love it. Um, the only thing is these really are like super soft and squishy, which you don't feel, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but this is a bit denser in the sense that I feel like it's less water. Uh, I've noticed that this can really water down a product. So I'm curious to see, um, I want to go to like a Sephora and just touch a mini beauty blender to see if it has that sort of. Uh, core density that this has because I feel like this can sometimes be a little bit too shearing because it can take in so much water and I've squeezed this sucker out just because it doesn't have much of a like core density the way this does like I can't squeeze this all the way down the way I can this like I could just squish this down to nothing and I don't know if the actual beauty blender would be like that but if it's not, if it has that core, I would probably make the splurge for it because I really do find that it helps with packing under I concealer really easily and evenly, which I like. I'm also gonna go back and put on my concealer over the spots that I used for green, just to one, help get rid of any green that might be peeking through, and two, provide that extra bit of coverage on those areas. And again, 
I just pat it out. Like now you can see, like I still have bumps there. That's not gonna go away, but you can't see the redness, which I personally like. This is just like a um, beauty mark that I have. So I don't know, I'm happy with it. I like the coverage for me, it is sufficient. So now I'm just gonna set everything. This is the Your Mineral Sweden. And to set that, I have fallen in love with the Morphe E3 brush. I had never understood a powder brush until this brush. Uh, and again, spoiler alert, this is my Project 10 pan. I have very little of this product left. And I just like gently pat the areas with powder. I don't think I've gotten like a fine science down for setting powder. I feel like I'm gonna always struggle with setting powder, but any tips, let me know in the comments below. All right, home stretch, we're moving on to face products. So to start with some bronzer. Hello, I repanned my um, Body Shop bronzer, which I'm really happy about. I was super nervous, but I watched the tutorial that Pretty Facility 6, Cherish, posted a long time ago. I always like to watch her tutorial for it. I think that she does a really nice job explaining it, and it came out great, which I think is testament to her, so thank you, Cherish. Uh, so to put that on, sorry, I didn't tell you guys, this is the... It's just like an overall like face powder brush from Rite Aid brand. I don't think they still make this anymore because I went into Rite Aid a couple of weeks ago and they seem to have like revamped their brush line, but I'm telling you, this is awesome and it was like maybe $7. The other one I'm using to do like the hollows of my cheeks are is the Morphe 438 brush. Love it. So as you guys can see, I... Um, really have discovered some awesome things thanks to that service. I have, I decided to stop getting it just because I um, have a lot of brushes now and I don't need any more, like I don't need three arrays of powder brushes. I kind of feel like any of the holes I had within my uh, brush collection or in my routine have since been filled. But if you do not feel that way, I'm gonna once again recommend this to you. So I've just added some color to my general face to make myself look more alive because even though I'm pretty tan right now, I'm still pretty pale. Uh, next up, we're going to take uh, another new discovery that I've been loving lately is the e.l.f. Total Face Palette. In particular, I have been loving these two shades, the highlight and the blush shade. I know that I technically should get my butt together and do and use just my like Clinique chubby stick wand, but I'm so sick of it and it just is not going away. So I've pulled this out. So I'm using to put this onto my face, my Morphe M510 brush. Like seriously, I have become obsessed with these. I just, I like that it's natural and I feel like you're probably not gonna be able to really notice it on camera because it is pretty soft. But I also like that I can build it up. Too often I find that highlighters are so intense to work with that it's like I have to be so careful and I don't wanna be careful all the time. I wanna be able to like build something up or like not be so nervous about whether or not I'm gonna have too much on my face. Oh yeah. Now to put on my blush, I'm using the Morphe E4 brush. And I'm gonna go into that blush color there. And again, I like this blush because it's one of the only blushes I own that I can actually build up the color. And it just provides a really nice wash of color. I don't think it's gonna show up too well on camera because to be honest, I feel like my blush never shows up that great on camera. I always look a little bit washed out. Don't know why that is, but PS, loving this camera. I hope you guys are liking it too. Uh, it's definitely an adjustment and it's been a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm a big fan of it. So yeah. Okay, that's my blush face. This is awesome. This is like $6, big fan. I am now moving on to doing my setting spray. And I recently picked up the MAC Prep in Prime. This is the first MAC product I have ever purchased. And I don't know how I feel about it. It's definitely one of those items where YouTube made me buy it, but I don't necessarily know if it's as magical as I've heard all the reviews be for it, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray. Uh, so while 
probably just go ahead and let this air out. I'm also curious to hear from you guys, what did you do this summer? Did you guys do anything special during summer break or during the summer months? Because I don't know about you, but we had a really phenomenal summer here in Massachusetts. It was just beautiful weather 24 seven. So I'd love to hear what you did. Last thing to end this whole shebang, I'm gonna do the Bare Minerals Moxie Get Ready uh, lipstick. This is one of those items again that I'm trying to pan. It's just like my side piece though. It's not necessarily in a project, but I actually really like this color. You can probably tell I don't wear lip products very often, but this is it. This is kind of my um, finished face. I do not reapply this during the day. This is one of those things that I apply in the morning and then once it's gone, it's gone. But this is what I've been rocking lately. I hope you guys enjoyed getting ready with me and I will see you in another video real soon. Bye.